what's up everybody welcome back so we're making good progress with the weapon wheel and i want to continue working on it today so we're going to make sure that the holstered weapons on the character will update and uh, it will actually change weapons if we make changes in the weapon wheel as well so that's the first thing we're going to do and then we're also going to start working on the little widgets on the side that will display the information about damage fire rate and all that kind of stuff and so that's today's video if you like the series please consider leaving a like and if you want to get your hands on the project file you can become a member of the channel or become a patreon and then you will get access to premium channels in the discord and also a download for the project so with all of that stuff out of the way let's start working on the weapon wheel so let's start with the holstered weapons and we need to go to the base character for that so open our hero base and we're gonna start in the event graph so i want to make a small change to how the load holstered weapon mesh event is working so look for the load holstered weapon mesh event over here and we are actually going to change it up a little bit so i'm gonna move it to the side um so we're gonna get rid of the is loading asset boolean and i want to just create uh, three separate threads in here so we can load all three of the slots simultaneously so uh, after we created or uh, sorry we deleted the boolean over here you can go to the select weapon event and also delete the boolean from there and then you should be able to safely remove it from the list over here as well so you can get rid of the is loading asset branch uh, bool sorry then for the load holstered weapon mesh event, we're going to uh, get rid of the mesh component input. So let's delete that one. We're going to keep the new mesh soft object reference and we want to add a new input and that's going to be the component index. So that's simply an integer. And then the first thing we want to do in here is switch on an integer. So drag off the component index, switch on int and plug it in. So we need our slot 0, 1 and 2 in here. And we don't really need a default pin, so we can get rid of that one. And then we simply want to async load an asset over here. So for example, for slot 0, you can plug in the async load asset, cast and then set skinned asset and update. Only for the last one, we want to grab the holstered weapons from our variables. So we have an array of skeletal mesh components. And then we can simply get a copy from here. And in here, uh, we're just going to type 0 and plug it into the target over here. So this is for slot 0. So make sure those match up. 0 over here, 0 in the get node. And then we can simply copy and paste this two more times. And hook everything up. So we have this one for slot number 1. Make sure we plug in the new mesh over here. And then we need to set the index over here to 1. And this is for slot number 2. So also plug in the actual mesh over here. Oh really. And then change the index. So this is for the skeletal mesh component index number 2. Um, so this is the new setup for the holstered weapon mesh loading. And now we can go to the actual holster weapon function so let's look for that one and in there we're actually gonna make a whole bunch of changes so what i'm gonna do is simply uh, start from scratch and write this again um, uh, i want to change it up a little bit so we can simply call this function uh, if any potential change has been made and then the function will simply check all of the holstered weapons and update them so uh, we're also changing how it works a little bit because right now uh, a primary weapon in slot 1 can be assigned to holstered weapon skeletal mesh index uh, zero, oh, sorry, 1 or 2. And we're going to make sure that all of the indexes will simply always match up. So uh, the weapon in slot number 2 will always be the holstered weapon index number 2. So long story short, I'm just going to delete everything in here and start from scratch. Um, so we 
don't need these inputs so we can get rid of the boolean entirely and for the weapon row name i'm gonna rename it and this is going to be the weapon loadout and turn it into an array of names so we have the entire array we can simply plug in here then we're going to grab a for each loop and loop through the array now the first thing i'm going to do is store these in a local variable and we might already have them um, no so for the array element drag off here promote to local variable and this is the local weapon name And then I also want to use one for the array index. So we already had that one. So I'm going to drag it in here, local array index, hook it up and plug in the index for the for each loop. So now that we have those stored, I'm going to grab a branch in here and we're going to check if the local weapon name is not empty. So drag off the local weapon name, not equal to. And then we're going to type in empty in here plug it into the condition so if the weapon name is empty we need to remove any holstered weapons that might be in there so we can grab the holstered weapons from the variables over here the skeletal mesh component array drag it in here and we're gonna get a copy of the local array index so the local variable plug it in over here and we want to know if this is valid so drag off here and look for an is valid plug it in so this goes into the false bin if the weapon name is not empty so if it is actually empty and then if this is a valid component we're going to destroy it so drag off the get node and look for destroy component plug it into the is valid bin and then we need to make sure we update our arrays so we're going to grab our holstered weapons skeletal mesh components and we're going to set an array element so plug it into the not valid pin and also into the destroy component node uh, the index is our local array index and the item is going to be empty because we just removed it and then make sure we enable size to fit so the first time we run the function this will actually work as well and we want to do the same thing for the holstered weapon names so make sure that array is updated as well so grab a set array element plug in the holstered weapon names we can plug in the local array index and this time we're simply going to type empty in here because the slot is now empty and so that's good to go for this branch then over here we're going to continue by grabbing another branch plug it in over here and we want to check if the active weapon index is not the same as our local index so let's go over here and we want to grab our active weapon index and compare it so let's make it equal to and then grab our local index so the local array index so if this is true then uh, this is the actual weapon we are currently wielding so we don't need to holster this weapon because we're holding it in our hands so if this is true we're also going to hook it up to the is valid pin over here and that will get rid of any meshes that might be in there and if it's false we can continue and we want to do one last check so again we're going to grab a branch in here and this time we're going to check the holstered weapon names so grab that one the array and we're going to get a copy from our local array index so let's grab the array index plug it in here as well and if this is equal to our local weapon name so let's grab an equal to and compare it to the weapon name from the for each loop so the one we are currently using inside of this loop body plug it into the condition uh, so if this is true then we are already wielding this weapon as an holstered weapon so we don't need to update it it's the same weapon that's already in there so if this is true we're not going to do anything uh, if this is false we do need to update the actual mesh so from the false pin we're going to drag off and we're going to get a table row get the data table row and we want to get our weapon info table 
Then for the row name, we can plug in our local weapon name. So plug that in the row name over here. And we want to grab the out row so we can grab the actual weapon mesh soft object reference from here. So we need that a little bit later. First of all, we're going to grab our holstered weapons array in here again. So the skeletal mesh components. And we're going to get a copy of our local array index. Plug it in here as well. Grab an is valid node. And plug it into the row found pin. So if the skeletal mesh component is already valid, all we need to do is update the actual mesh. So in that case, we can drag off the is valid pin and then load our holstered weapon mesh. So the event we just changed. And then we can grab the soft object reference, plug it in here, and grab our local array index and plug that into the component index. So that's if the skeletal mesh component already exists. And now if it's not valid, we need to create it. So then we're going to grab our local array index again, and we're going to switch on it. So switch on integer. This goes into the not valid pin. And in this case, we want to switch between slot 0, 1 or 2, because those are the only ones that have holstered weapons. And we want to set our local holster socket. So that's a variable that was already in here from the previous attempt of this function. So we can simply set that over here. And then this is going to be the holster socket underscore zero. And copy and paste it. So we can change it to holster socket one and two for the other slots. There we go. So the holster socket is set, then we can drag off here and add a skeletal mesh component. So make sure we plug in oh, all three of the execution pins over here. Then we're going to enable manual attachment. So we want to attach it ourselves and we're going to attach it to our mesh. So over here from the components, grab your character mesh, drag it in here and we're going to attach a component to component. So select this one, attach component to component. So the mesh is actually going to be the parent. So make sure that you plug in the character mesh into the parent pin. And then for the target, that's going to be the return value of the skeletal mesh component add node. So plug this one into the target. Uh, the socket name we want to attach it to is our local holster socket. So we can plug that one in here. And then we're going to grab the location rule and set it to snap to target and do the same thing for the rotation. So location, rotation, snap to target, still keep world, uh, keep relative. Um, so we added the mesh component, then we can call our load holstered weapon mesh. So let's call our new event or it's not new, but our changed event. And we can grab the actual mesh from the data table at the beginning over here. And then plug in our local array index again. So that will update the mesh. And then we want to update our arrays. So we're going to grab our local, uh, sorry, not local. We're going to grab the holstered weapons skeletal mesh component array and set an array element. Plug it in over here. So the return value from the add skeletal mesh component, we're going to plug that one into the item. And then we need the local array index for the index and make sure we enable size to fit over here. And then all we need to do is update the weapon names. So grab another set array element and this time we want to update the holster weapon names. So plug that one in. And we can grab the local array index over here and then plug in our local weapon name for the item. So grab that from the local variables, plug it in here as well. And then we want to go back and hook this one up to the other branch as well. So if we load uh, only change the mesh component, we don't need to update this array, but we do need to make sure that we change the name. So make sure you plug it in like this. So this is the new holstered weapons function that will make sure that everything should be updated 
correctly. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so that's because we changed the input for the function over here to an array and we have a single variable plugged in. So we're going to get to repairing this anyway. So uh, the errors are not an issue. Uh, let's go to the event graph where we are right now and make sure that we clean things up. So first of all, for this select weapon event, uh, we can simply clean things up by removing the last part. So we're going to set the weapon cosmetics, call our holster weapon function, and after that we don't need any of this stuff. So get rid of the for each loop and all of the stuff after that. Uh, for the plugin over here, so let's get rid of the input and then we can simply grab our weapon loadout from the variables and plug that into the event. And the unholster one doesn't exist anymore, so if you hold alt and click it, it will remove it. Um, so this should be good and this should compile again, so the errors are gone. Now this will update the holstered weapons if we use the select weapon uh, function by switching weapons. And this is actually called as a multicast event, so uh, with the rep notify over here. And we want to make sure that if we assign a new weapon to our loadout, that we can also call the holster weapon function. Um, but this is a run on server event, so we need to make sure that we can uh, replicate it to all of the other clients then, or other instances. So what we want to do, we're going to create a new boolean to make the holster weapon function trigger. So let's call this a uh, rep holster weapon. So this is a boolean and then set the replication over here to rep notify. So it will create the rep notify function over here on rep rep holster weapon. So open this one up first. And in here we're simply going to call the holster weapon event and then plug in the holstered weapons array. Uh, sorry, the weapon loadout array over here. And then we can go back to the event graph to the server assign weapon to loadout. And in here we want to make sure that we flip the ball. Uh, so let me quickly switch my notes over here. So we're going to grab a branch over here, plug it in. And first of all, let's check if this is actually an active weapon or not. So the weapon that we are currently wielding. So we're going to do equal to and then compare it to our active weapon index. Plug it in. So if this is false, then we want to update our holstered weapons so we can grab our rep holster weapon boolean. So we're going to grab a setter, plug it in over here. Also grab a getter and then flip it around with a not bool and plug it in over here. So this will fire the holster weapon functions for all of the other instances as well. Okay, so we can compile and save it. And that should be pretty much it for the holster weapons. So now we can also take a look at switching weapons if we change something in the weapon wheel. So to update the weapon switching, if we change our active weapon slot, uh, we want to start with the start switch weapon event and the server switch weapon event. And what we want to do in here is grab a variable setter for the active weapon index. So grab a set active weapon index and we're simply going to hook that up right at the beginning over here. So if we are the server, we want to set it over here on the authority pin and make sure we plug in the inventory index from the start switch weapon. And if we are a client, we want to make sure the server sets it in our server switch weapon event. So plug it in over here as well and plug in the inventory index. So the main reason for this is because we got rid of the is switching weapon pool. So we don't need to wait for the switch weapon animation to finish before we can start switching to the next weapon. So we want to update this integer right away. Otherwise we're going to run into issues. And um, so right now we're updating this immediately. Then uh, because we do that, we need to go to the switch weapon event over here. 
and this doesn't work anymore so where we grab the uh, correct montage for the switching so previously we changed the weapon index later and right now it's already changed so we need to make sure that we change up this part as well so we're going to get rid of this move it out of the way and we can simply drag off the uh, replication notify for the slot to switch to and then switch on an integer over here so plug this one into the switching weapon boolean and we can simply uh, enter our different slots so that's going to be 0 1 and 2 and we don't need a default pin in here so if we are switching to slot number 0 that's always the pistol equip and then for the other one that's the rifle equipped because that's the secondary web uh, primary weapon montage so this will fix the equip montages again and we can get rid of this part and then the last thing we want to do is go back to our server assign weapon to loadout event that we recently created and in here we are actually checking if we are changing our current weapon so that's this boolean if that's false, we're updating the holstered weapons. If this is true, we want to switch weapons possibly. So we're going to grab another branch in here, plug it in. And first we're going to check if the weapon row name over here is empty. So let's do equal to. Type in empty over here and plug it in. So if the weapon is not empty, so if this is false, then we can simply call the start switch weapon event. And then plug in the inventory index from the event over here. And if our new slot is actually empty, so if we cleared our slot, then we can call our can switch weapon function. So we can drag it in over here. And uh, what this function does, if we try to switch to an empty slot, it will look for the next valid slot. So if we have a slot to switch to, this will return true. So we can grab a branch, plug in the condition. And if this returns true, then we can start switching to that slot. So plug in start switch weapon and connect the slot to switch to. And if this is false, then we cleared all of our loadout slots and we don't have a weapon in the weapon wheel assigned. So then we're not going to do anything. Um, so that should be pretty much all of the updates and we should be ready to test this um, so let's just do it and make sure everything is working so i'm gonna run a two-player game and then i'll be back with you so i got a two-player game running uh, i'm the client on the right side and right now i should be able to change stuff so i should pick up weapons first uh, so let me grab this auto pistol and then grab the maverick rifle as well so those are in my inventory right now let me turn around so the other player can see the holstered weapons and now if i assign another weapon over here so for example the maverick then you will see it updates immediately on the character and if i go to my pistol over here for example and assign the auto pistol then it will also play the switch weapon animation and actually switch the weapon so that one only worked for the host and i actually know why that is and we're gonna get to fixing that in a later part so the reason for that is the rep notify doesn't fire because the actual slot index didn't change uh, so the rep notify only fired for the server and that's a pretty simple fix to be honest but i just forgot to include it in this video but other than that i think we are sure to go a uh, good to go so we have the holstered weapons updating and if i would do something similar for the host so let me grab an lmg for example and then i can replace my smg on my back for my lmg and it will update for both the host and the client so that's working so I think we are good to go over here, except for the little uh, rep notify hiccup that I mentioned. So now let's take a look at adding a little info widget to the weapon wheel so the player can actually see what weapon he's picking up and he can compare statistics like damage and DPS and fire rate and things like that. 
And so what we can do is actually grab that from our loadout menu. So let's open our widget blueprint loadout menu. And I'm going to grab this one on the left side because this one has the comparison values set up already. So we have the text over here hidden to the right side, but we can display compare values in here. And that's not in this one. So make sure you grab this entire border with everything in it. I'm going to right click and then simply copy it. Close this widget, open my weapon wheel and on the canvas panel, right click and then paste it. So now all we need to do is fix the alignment. So I'm going to anchor it to the right center of the screen. And then I'm going to set the anchors to minus 420 and minus 210. So minus 420, minus 210. And then uh, 210. That may be a little bit too small. So let's increase it a little bit to 40. Oh, that's up and down. Sorry, minus 210 and then make it 450. So it's a little bit off to the side. And so with this border in place, we want to get rid of this selected weapon text. So let's select this border with the text inside it. And I'm simply going to delete it. And then I want to add another row in between here to display the ammo values. So what we can do, for example, is grab this border over here with the text for the weapon class and I'm going to duplicate it. So uh, in here, we need to wrap this text with a horizontal box. So let me double check quickly. Yes, we want to do that. So select the text in here, right click, go to wrap with and then select a horizontal box. Now this first text doesn't need to be a variable, so we can just name it whatever we like. Make sure we disable is variable. And then for the text, I'm going to type ammo. Like so. Then we need a second text inside of the vertical box, a horizontal box. So duplicate this one and this needs to be a variable. So this is going to be the text weapon ammo selection. So that's from the uh, selected weapon, although that's not really our selected weapon, but all of these are also called selected. So I'm just going to keep them matching. So we have is variable enabled over here and the text can be something like zero for now. Then I'm going to duplicate the text that is not a variable again. And move it below the first weapon ammo text. So drag it under here. And simply change it to a dash. And then grab the variable text again, duplicate that one, move it below the dash. And this is going to be our weapon ammo maximum. Weapon ammo maximum for the selection. So keep that part. There we go. And so that should be pretty much our new widget. We do want to make sure that we grab this border over here and by default we're going to set it to hidden and then also give it a name so let's rename the border and this is our weapon info or the pickup weapon so weapon info pickup and enable is variable for the entire border as well uh, okay, so that should be good to go. We can compile and save this part and then dive into the graph. So let's open up the graph and we can make our lives a whole lot easier by simply copying some stuff from the loadout menu. So let's move this to the side and also open our widget blueprint loadout menu. And then get this back on screen. So go to the graph in here and we can grab a bunch of these functions. So make sure you that you grab them in the correct order. So otherwise some variables in there won't be valid uh, if you start with the wrong one. So first of all, let's grab the set compare value text, right click it and we're going to copy this. Then go to the weapon wheel, click on functions and paste the function. So we can keep the name, that's fine. And in here, all of the variables are actually valid. So the text and all of that stuff, we already copied that in the designer. 
So if you didn't mess around with any of those names, all of these variables will be valid. So this function is good to go. Then we want to go back to the loadout menu and also grab the set compare values. So the one below it, copy it, go back to the weapon wheel and paste the function. Now in here we have a few variables that we need to create. So we can simply right click and create variable. So you want to do that for the DPS ones, for the damage ones, and also the fire rate. And make sure you create normal variables, not local ones. So if you did all of the floats over here, you are good to go. Compile and save. Then go back to the loadout menu and we're going to grab the get weapon damage function. So let's copy this one as well. Go back to the weapon wheel and paste it. So in here everything is good to go. No changes needed. And the last thing we need from the loadout menu is our update weapon info. So let's right click this one, copy it, go back to the weapon wheel and paste it again. So this time we get a reference issue. Let's just do nothing and confirm. So we're going to go in here and fix it anyway. Uh, the first thing I want to do is rename this function. So I'm going to call this update weapon info and then underscore pickup. So this is for the weapon that we are about to pick up. Um, so with all of those in place, let's go into this update weapon info pickup function. And we need to fix a few things. So the first is the weapon row name over here, which is not valid. So we want to grab these ones and create variables. So right click, create variable. But I am going to rename this one. So this one is going to be the compare name for the equipped weapon. Compare name equipped. And then for the lower one, I'm going to create a variable. And that's the over here. And that's the compare name for the new weapon that we are picking up. So compare name uh, pickup over here. And then what we can do is get rid of this stuff over here. So these are not valid, all of these images and stuff, because we only have one info card in here. So that's not an issue. We can simply move this pin directly to the branch and get rid of all of those. That should be good to go. Then for the branch over here, we are checking an empty name and that's not good. We want to type in empty over here because for our weapon array, an empty slot is actually called empty. So make sure you type in empty. Uh, that's good to go. Then we can scroll down a whole bunch to the back over here. So we don't need to worry about any of this stuff. But then right before here, uh, before we start setting the actual text in the widget, we want to grab a branch again and move these pins over. And first of all, we want to check if this is our equipped weapon or not. So we have a, a boolean for that in the local variables. Is equipped weapon, plug it in over here. If this is false, we want to update all of the text. And if this is true, then we don't want to do anything. So we can simply plug the true pin into the return node over here and so that's good to go then we want to go to the back where we are setting all of these text stuff and we want to add some setters for the new ammo values that we added so we can grab something like this for example the set text node now we can disconnect the execution pin from the branch and plug it in over here so first we want to set the text for the weapon ammo selection. So let's go to the variables over here and we have the text weapon ammo selection. Plug it in and we can get the values from our weapon inventory. So let's grab the weapon inventory. Over here we can get a copy. Uh, sorry, not get. We want to find an item and we want to find the item that we are actually using in this function right now. So that's the weapon row name that comes from the input over here. So you can just type a uh, right click and type weapon row name without promoting it to a variable. 
uh, weapon row name and that will make it pop up so now we can plug it in all the way at the end over here in the find node so if we know the index of this weapon in the weapon inventory array then we can grab the ammo arrays so ammo clip player and get the correct value from here so plug it in like so do the same thing for the ammo stock array so grab ammo stock player and also get the value from the find node and we can simply add those together so add plug them in and then we want to turn this into a text so integer to text and you could uh, disable grouping but it doesn't really matter probably unless you have more than a thousand rounds uh, so we can plug it into the set text over here and then all we need to do is set the maximum ammo values so let's copy and paste the set text node over here this time we want to plug in the text weapon ammo maximum and we need a two text from integer so let's grab that one and then we can go all the way back over here to our data table and simply add the ammo stock value and the ammo clip value together and that's going to be the maximum ammo value so plug that into the two text node for the set text and that should update the ammo values so after that we can plug this back into the branch and over here we're going to update the weapon icon so we need to change that a little bit as well uh, we don't need the load HUD icon because we recently or I recently discovered the set brush from soft texture so we can simply drag off the local image icon and then set a brush from a soft texture plug it in over here reconnect the execution pin and then we can grab the local icon and plug it into the soft texture reference so that should be good to go as well and then the last thing we want to do for these compare values is make sure that we actually type empty again in these boxes so if one of the weapons is empty there's nothing to compare so we don't want to show the values okay so that should be the update of this event so we can compile and save it and then we need to make sure that everything actually updates So let's start in the event graph and we're going to create a new custom event in here and call this one a selection button hoovered selection button hoovered so every time we hoover over another one of the selection buttons we want to update the weapon info card so that's why uh, that's what we're doing over here so for the event we're going to give it one input and that's the weapon row name. Uh, so that's a name variable. And then we can simply call the update weapon info pickup function. So let's drag that in over here. Uh, to compare something we need to have two different values. So we need to always call this function twice to make everything work. The first time you want to call it is for the equipped weapon. So make sure you enable the, uh, the boolean over here. And then you can simply grab the weapon loadout from the variables. And we're going to get a copy. And we're going to get it for the selection for slot index. So plug that in over here. And this weapon row name goes into the first pin. So that's our equipped weapon so it's not really our equipped weapon that's a bit confusing but that's because we uh, copied it from the loadout menu and then we're going to copy and paste it and call it again but this time we're not going to enable the boolean and we want to plug in the weapon row name from the hovered button over here and if we call this twice then uh, this will be the correct uh, return value and it will update the compare values so that should work. So with this event in place, we can go to the on mouse button down function. So that's over here under functions. And in here, we want to make sure that we make the actual widget visible. So we have a set visibility visible node over here for the selection box. And we simply want to grab our border for the weapon info pickup and also plug that in over here. 
So this will show the widget. And then if we close our menu, so the selection menu, then we want to get rid of it again. So we're going to uh, go to close selection menu function. And let me grab my notes quickly. So what we want to do in here is also just uh, hide the actual border. So let's plug that into the set visibility node over here for the selection box. Make sure it's hidden, but it should be. And then we can grab our selection button hoovered uh, event. So we want to call that all the way at the end over here. Selection button hoovered. Oh, that was the wrong one. And we want to make sure that we set that to empty. So that way the compare values will be reset as well. So over here simply type empty and that should be good to go. So that's opening and closing the menu. Now uh, the last thing we want to do is go to our uh, weapon wheel selection button. So the other widget, let's open that one. Go to the graph. And in here we want to add an unhoovered and an unhoovered event. So for the button, go to unhoovered and then also an on unhoovered. And we can grab our widget blueprint weapon wheel and then call the selection button hoovered event. Oh, here. So if we hoovered the button, we can plug in the weapon row name. And if we unhoovered the button, we can simply set it to empty. So let's copy and paste it, plug in the weapon wheel, and then over here type in empty. Okay, so that should be good. So let's compile and save and cross our fingers that we didn't make any mistakes. So in that case, it should work. So let's open it up and let's have a little look. Let's do it solo because this is not something that works in multiplayer anyway. Uh, so free for all start game. And now let me see. So if I open the widget and right click to replace a weapon, then the widget will pop up. So currently I can select the weapon. So let me clear this one and then go to this slot. So now if I hover over the weapon name, you will see the statistics of the AA20 compared to the SMG that's already in here for the DPS damage. And I can also see the ammo values and stuff like that. So that's working. And the next episode, we're going to add a little widget in the center over here that will display the statistics for the current weapon in the slot. So that way it's a little bit easier to compare everything. And you also can see the ammo values for your current weapon in here and things like that. So we're getting close to completing it. Uh, next episode, we're going to add this little widget in the center. And then we're also going to add the replace menu if we want to pick up any more weapons than we can carry inside of the inventory. And that's pretty much the last thing we need to do. If that's done, uh, the entire weapon wheel is done. So I think one more episode and then we should be good to go. And um, so thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and I'll be back soon for more. Talk to you later guys. Bye bye.